to all those above me that watch over me, to all of you, my fave para peeps on this side of the veil, welcome. This is Sean Whittington's Paranormal Ministry Live 2.0. I'm your host, Sean Whittington. I am a deacon in the United States Old Catholic Church, and I'm coming to you live from my haunted house, my very haunted house, where I live. And it, it's quiet now, but it may not be quiet with my guest today for two reasons. She's not quiet. <laughs> and uh, she probably has a ghost posse following her around, as I do. She's We've got a lot in common, and maybe we'll get to that during the show. But I can already tell I'm going to love her, and she's going to be a great guest. And I know that's why you all tuned in. So I'll get to her ASAP. Uh, let's check the prayer urn. Nancy M. from Texas. Hi, Nancy. I know there was a real Santa, St. Nicholas. Yes. Going through a tough patch now and would like you to pray that my family and children have a Merry Christmas. You're going to make me cry, Nancy. Yes, I will most definitely. I don't think I have a Santa prayer, but I have a, you know, I have a beautiful family prayer for this time of year that I'm going to offer up for you and your family. Okay, let's do this one. I offer this prayer up for Nancy in Texas. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, from you, every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. Father, you are love and life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, born of woman, and through the Holy Spirit, fountain of divine charity, grant that every family on earth may become for each successive generation a true shrine of love and life. Grant that your grace may guide the thoughts and actions of husbands and wives for the good of their families and of all the families in the world. Grant that the young may find in the family solid support for their human dignity and for their growth in truth and love. Grant that love, strengthened by the sacrament of marriage, may prove mightier than all the weaknesses and trials through which our families sometimes pass. Through the intercession of the Holy Family of Nazareth, grant that the church may fruitfully carry out her worldwide mission in and through the family, through Christ our Lord, who is the way, the truth, and the life forever and ever. Amen. It's interesting that I, I forgot that that prayer mentioned Nazareth, and that's where my cross, this cross is from. A holy man in Nazareth sent this for me. Very rare because you can't really hardly find anything from Nazareth. And um, so thought you should know. <laughs> okay, Nancy, God bless you, sister. You know what, Nancy, you didn't ask for it, but after the show, I'll go into the room where I light all the candles for uh, candle request, and I'll light one for you and your family for this holiday season, and it'll burn until it's done burning out. So, thank you for that. Let's check the mailbag real quick. Monty B. Hi, Monty from Oregon. Oregon. Does evil take the holidays off? <laughs> Do we still have to be as on guard? Brother, you always have to be on guard. Trust me. But no, they don't take the holidays off. In fact, uh, they are probably more on their game during the holiday season uh, than, you know, in my humble opinion, any other time. So, yes, you have to be on guard. And I would have, you know, even if you don't believe if you're, you know, you have no religious belief system in place or you're an atheist or I, I don't judge and I'm not trying to convert anybody. But I'm. this is my advice for everybody watching and listening, regardless of where you're at spiritually. Just try and absorb and take in what the whole holiday season is about. Love, light, goodwill to man, uh, peace on earth. 
you know, just pray for those things, whoever you pray for. So um, that's it. But yeah, be on guard because they don't take the holidays off. Okay. If there's anything you want to know about my wife and I and our ministry work, go to our website, www.ghost-b-gone.biz. If you go there, keep in mind my wife and I don't charge for our ministry work, helping people with their paranormal issues. So if you go there to visit, there's a lot of cool things to see. But if you notice the donate button and you're able to do so, and trust me, brothers and sisters, I know times are tough. Trust me. But if you're able to, to send in a small donation to my ministry, uh, it'll be appreciated from the bottom of our hearts. And trust me, we'll put it to good use. While you're there, if you have issues of a spiritual nature, not paranormal, and you want to make an appointment to speak with me about those things, there's a place where you can make an appointment to speak with me. But out, don't leave the website without going over to the page called Introduction to Spiritual Warfare slash Books. On that page, you'll find both my books, God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry, and God, Ghosts, and the Paranormal Ministry 2. And if you haven't done your good deed for the day yet, part of the proceeds of every sale of every copy of my books goes to support stjude.org, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, Nevada, and the ASPCA. So it's a no-brainer. You get to help some of the neediest children on the planet and the animals too how cool is that you can get the books a little less expensive at amazon if you buy them off the website they leave my office here they're author's copies so i sign them and they come to you in a beautiful house blessing kit which who couldn't use a house blessing kit um you know it's it's like the old saying you know it's better to have a gun and not need one than to need one and not have one in my in my <laughs> line of work. It's always better to have, you know, the spiritual weapons than to not have them. So that's what you get if you get them off the website. Um, scroll a little bit further down and you'll see uh, the course I offer. I offer a 12-week online college-level course, Introduction to Spiritual Warfare. And this is a good course for all you true warriors for Christ out there that feel a calling and a longing to want to have more knowledge when it comes to drawing your line in the sand making a stand, circling the wagons, and putting up a good fight, perhaps the fight of your life against true evil if it ever comes calling. This is the course for you. All of my students who graduate get a stunning diploma, certificate of completion, suited for framing, along with some other very special blessed gifts that you can only get from yours truly, the Rev. So um, you can enroll in the course there. If you want a little more information about the course before making that type of commitment, there is a in Sean Whittington's Introduction to Spiritual Warfare course Facebook page. You can go there and you can read about the course or just call me. We'll talk about it and see if the course is right for you. Okay, the moment of truth and the reason why you all tuned in. I, like I said, I can already tell I love her. I've seen her podcast, one of them. I know she's got a couple of them. Uh, great podcast, and she's just so cool. We have a lot in common. This is going to be a great interview. Brothers, and it's live from Jamaica. It, it, that's a first on the show, live from Jamaica. Can you believe? Yeah, they got bikers in Jamaica. I didn't know that. Women bikers in Jamaica. You know, that would be a great club. Women bikers of Jamaica. Patch on the back of the leather jackets. Man, that's a that's a winner, winner, jerk chicken dinner. Okay. <laughs> I've lost half the audience. All right, guys. Without She is a paranormal enthusiast, author, podcast host, lifelong paranormal experiencer, investigator, you name it. Her resume goes on and on and on. I've got her resume right here. And I'm just going to work off that because just in reading her bio, there's so many things I've learned about her that I didn't know. So without further ado, please give a big, warm, paranormal ministry family welcome to the one and only Kelly Schaefer. Hi! <laughs> wow! <laughs> and we are not in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you know what? You're, I, I tend to get, I don't know why. You know what's, what I found out recently about me, which I never knew before, and I'm still yeah. in doubt. Um, the other day, some people that are close to me that I've only really recently met, 
oh, let's say within the past couple of years, I've heard a couple of a couple of people throw out the term anxiety mm-hmm. and kind of aim it towards me. And a couple of people throw out that you worry a lot. And I never thought that I did. And I don't think I have anxiety. So I asked my wife the other night, I go, do you think I have anxiety? And she, without even missing a beat with like, she's about to take a bite of food, we're having dinner. She goes, yeah, you worry a lot. I'm like, <laughs> oh no. I, I, so I know this is just Facebook live and YouTube, but you and I, you have a yes, podcast. Sir. Right I have to do actually right now. If you want to look good and sound good and put on a good show, mm-hmm. I don't care if yeah. it's just you and me here. One I don't have to look good for. <laughs> One's just audio. The other one, I'm like, okay, you're gonna get me out of bed for this? Fine, all right. You know, you want to make sure you get your <laughs> your guest looks good and sounds good. That Zach, yeah. you know, my, Zach's my producer. You never know what's gonna happen with the show with Zach. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you just have to, uh, you know, so maybe right. So you, when you sent to me, well, um, I don't even remember what you said to me in our, in the chat right before we, I, we came on something about, I said, are you I ready? said, I'm yeah. sorry. I thought it was Jamaica time. At, that for that split Which second. Which I think is the same. I, I, I don't have a mirror, but for that split second, I must've did. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking for a split second, you got me. I'm thinking, is she in Jamaica? So, um, I wish you got, you got I, wish. Me. I wish, but thank you so much for nice. taking an hour out of your busy Fridays to hang out my with pleasure. us. And, um, my pleasure. And anything you want to talk about, nothing's off the table. Um, even if you, I you just, know, you know, do, can my potty mouth come out? Cause that comes out of, <laughs> can, involuntarily. Like said, <laughs> you just be you. And you know, if, if YouTube or Facebook takes the video down, they take it down. But yeah, you can say down. whatever you want to say. I'm usually pretty good, but every now and then I'll, you know, something will come up and it'll come out. But well, my you know. co-producer, which is Zach's wife, Adrian, she mm-hmm. is ghost gal slash potty mouth. And oh yeah. She's still on the air. So if they haven't taken her off the air, you're good to go. And Zach will attend. Yeah, my that. team needs to name with my with my team when they when they join the team, when they've made the decision that they're going to join the team, they get to pick their nickname and then they get their first starter pack of business cards, courtesy of me. And so I they're trying to decide what my nickname should be because I don't have one yet. I think it should be potty mouth. <laughs> or I'll tell you what, I got another good one for you. This is something <laughs> I just learned a couple of nights ago from you. What? A lot of people sh- people that are thinking about that live close to you that may be thinking about um, trying to join the team, they should know that if if they don't live up to your standards, of a, you just break their ankle. Oh, Lord Almighty. That wasn't my fault. Uh, seriously, How's she doing? it's not my fault. Gina's doing great. Her nickname's Ghostbait um, because the ghosts apparently like her enough to push her down the stairs. Oh, no. uh, we were at we were at a hotel where the um, the rumor is that people get touched and pushed on the stairs. And I had taken the stuff out to the car to put stuff in, came back to get her stuff and, you know, finished getting out of the hotel. And there she is at the top of the stairs. And all of a sudden she was down on the landing and I said, are you OK? And she goes, no. And she turns around and here's her ankle doing this. I'm oh, like, no. uh, yeah, you're not OK. So I ran up, got a towel, got her into a temporary re- temporary stabilization until the ambulance could get there. But we were in the ambulance and going to the hospital, and she went right from ER into surgery, and it was just unreal. Her first night, it was her first night investigating, and yeah. she is an incredible investigator. She, it, she, most of the people that are on my team, you wouldn't even know that they're all beginners. I have the oldest, the oldest one on my team has been investigating for a year. Well, let and me then, ask you course, this. I wasn't, I wasn't planning to ask you this question, but this Go is where it. the conversation is going. Um, yeah. What do you think about that? I, I have a lot of people that reach out to me who have just a good old disembodied human spirit in the house who mm-hmm. it ranges from, sometimes it ranges from just being mischievous mm-hmm. to sometimes touching sometimes a little more physical and it's like you, a lot of people are out there thinking well it wasn't a ghost if it shoved her down the stairs there's a difference between being touched 
and pushed at the top of the stairs or being picked up and thrown or really shoved by mm -hmm. you know, something worse than a disembodied spirit at the top of some stairs. What's your thoughts on, do you think the ghost really meant to hurt her or was it being playful or do you think or, the ghost can well, get really you wild? Gotta first, you got to first go down to, did the ghost really happen or was there just simply an accident with a railing not being where it should be or whatever? What I mean, it was interesting that it was on a staircase that had that report, but I don't know. We should, she doesn't remember. She has limited memory about the accident aside from getting down to the bottom. Um, so I don't know. And I've not encountered a spirit yet that's been able to do something like that. So, but then you get poltergeists that have the energy to do it. And I, you know, I, I'm on the fence about the whole thing. Um, uh, we'd have, and to, I've also heard you comment about element. I believe I have elementals. Elementals. Yeah. Elementals. Around my house. Mm -hmm. And you commented about those. Those can get physical. Elementals can get very physical and they can be very nasty. And a lot of the times, <laughs> and um, they can get very nasty. They can, they, they can act like, uh, honestly, most of the demonic activity that you see normally is an elemental. Interesting. So that's, yeah, that's where I stand on them. And I, three hour difference between Denmark. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not Christmas yet, is it? Have I missed Christmas? Um, but um, yeah, I really, I don't know. I don't know if it was the ghost or not. I really don't. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's uh, sometimes uh, things will happen on a, on a case. I haven't worked a case in a while. I decided when I entered the seminary, I decided to kind of turn the page on that for a little while and just concentrate on studies and get through it and, and I get to my house. ordination as a priest, but um, I still get people calling me up, and sometimes, you know, uh, they've had a spirit get so physical to where I say, I tell the wife, you know, I think I am. I'm going to swing out there just to check on things, mm -hmm. um, and I'll go. And my spidey senses that normally go up if I'm in the presence of something that's like really low vibrational, uh, malevolent, or worse. And those spidey sessions were going up, and I just really honestly felt it was just a cantankerous, disembodied human spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got know, one um, of those in one of our locations. We've got one. He, We were in the location, and my uh, one of my investigators that's also training to ex exhibit his mediumship ability, he was looking behind me, and I, you know, I felt something behind me, so I turned and looked, and I looked back at him, and and he goes, you saw it, huh? And I said, saw what? <laughs> and what he described was exactly what I saw, which was a tall, dark figure with a hat that's kind of like an Amish hat, but he wasn't Amish. And he was just pacing back and forth and back and forth, grumpier than shit. Wow. So, yeah, the spirits get the same thing we get. They get grumpy. Yeah. They get happy. They get tickled pink. I mean, I had a, I had a Native American spirit out of the Bell Witch Cave that was just the happiest little shit that I've ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh. You are reading he was my a, mind He right was now. incredible. Will you talk about that for a little bit? You're in Tennessee. That's right. I am that's, in Tennessee. I'm just like 40 Bell minutes Witch away Country. from Bell Witch. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Talk to me um, about I think that Bell Witch has a lot of things about it that are not true. They're exaggerated by Hollywood to get more viewership and things like that. I had actually written the site off. I was not going to visit it because of all the stories and, and how much you can't decipher between what's true and what's not true. So I had written it off and I got called by some friends of mine, Todd and Leanne, and they asked me to come out and be a guest investigator for them. I said, yeah, sure. No problem. And that ended up being one of the nights that will probably go into one of my books. It was an incredible night. Um, we, the group that started out with me in the house, um, were the ones that got that new picture of the full bodied apparition in the doorway. Um, and then of course we had the native American spirit that, you know, decided to make his appearance in front of me at the porta potty. I'm sitting there in the porta potty and up comes this image of this native American spirit. And I'm like, do not tell me there is a native American spirit sitting outside the front of this porta potty waiting for me to come out. Sure. Shit. There he is. 
And he followed me all the way back up to the graveyard. He showed us where he was buried. He showed us where his wife was buried. He said that he was one of the um, hunters of the group. And during the summertime when he wasn't hunting, he played with children. He was just a happy, happy, happy guy. But that place, that place has a lot of energy to it. And I would love to go back and be able to be an investigator for the entire site and, and really take a look at it because the cave is, is charged. Um, having been, um, both my parents were professional photographers and my, my life growing up was in the studio. So I spent a lot of time around photography and, um, they showed photos that were taken inside that cave that I can't explain. I can't tell you how those were taken. They, they cannot be faked. If correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that the original Bell Witch case? Didn't that go down in the annals or in the history books as yeah. being like the only court case that actually they actually determined it was a real haunting? I don't know about the court case. I haven't gotten through the book that I bought about it, but um it's it's one that I think that I think the original family ticked off the witch. And the witch did whatever it was that she could do. But as for the remaining um, haunting that we see today, I think that's just regular old everyday hauntings. So very, very cool. Yeah, that's what yeah. a what a what an area. So talk to me about your area. I recently went to uh, flew into um, Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. Louisville, Kentucky, Louisville, over Louisville. to um, English, Indiana. Mm -hmm. And I don't get that kind of country out here in Vegas. So I was amazed at the countryside. Oh, I had some people that came there that were from Tennessee, mm -hmm. um, Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about what a, a rich, you know, I've, I've heard about the Hatfields and the Schaefers and um, McCoys. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's that area like as far as ghost it hunting? Is well, it's one of the reasons why I decided to move to Tennessee is because of the history. I I have a love of history that goes so deep in my bones, I can't even tell you. And the period of the his the period that covers the Civil War is one of my favorite, favorite times to research. And it is one of the most beautiful country part of the country that you could ever be in. Um, I love the people. I love the customs. I love everything there is about Tennessee and probably will die here. But as for hauntings, uh, my first outgo in um, the area was down in Murfreesboro at a, a cemetery where I got my first full bodied apparition. And I just knocked me on my feet, on my butt. I, I could not believe that I actually saw what I saw. It was so solid from the head down to its knees as I was scanning down to say, okay, who's this person? And me and my observant little personality, I was like, okay, what's he wearing? And here's a khaki shirt. And then he had khaki pants and then he wasn't visible past the knees. And I'm like, Oh, and I'm up and running. And, um, it was, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, then there was the bill witch that's up here. That's only 40 miles away. And then I think it's 40, it's you know, somewhere around in there. And then I'm only 15 miles away from the octagon hall. That's not that's right. paranormal. It's supernatural. It covers everything. It's got Bigfoot. It got UFOs. It has uh, paranormal activity. It, it, is an amazing location to go to. I have yet to see a lot of what has been reported, but from what I've experienced there, it's off the charts weird. Okay. okay, so you guys are talking about Tennessee and we're all bikers here, so I had to pull it out. We all know about uh, patches. How about that? Which one did you get? Which one you got? The paddle, paddle faster. faster. <laughs> I hear banjo music. Yeah. Yes, that's, that is one of my favorites. Yeah, of, one of my, my first lessons was you don't go up a driveway you don't know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, the people out here are very private. Love it. Um, they leave me alone. I leave them alone. And I'm just the neighborhood weirdo. 
Well, that was good advice I got from both of you earlier before we went live on the, if, if you have any doubt about getting back on the bike, don't do it. Yeah, you don't do it. So I'll probably don't sell mine. Um, Cause it's just, I've changed in just the five years I, I got off it to work with my wife and her illness and get through mm -hmm. that. I, I'm different now. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm not that guy. Did you ever see 3000 miles to Graceland? I don't know, but I did. I went down to Memphis this year. It was my first overnight on the bike. This was a movie starring Kevin distance. Costner where he thought he was related to, he was a, a hoodlum in the movie, but he thought he was related to Elvis. But oh, there's yeah. a scene in the movie where he blows up a gas station and takes the gas station owner's girl and they drive off, but he's driving through the desert and this motorcycle club pulls behind him and then pulls alongside of him, and then they take off, and the last biker stops and rides alongside and talks to him. That was the Red mm -hmm. Riders. We were, I was in that. And, oh, uh, wow, that's cool. That. Yeah, we filmed that out yeah. in Nevada. It was really, really cool, but I, that's not me anymore. You know, I've... No, I, it's, and, and I've changed completely from when I started riding the bike till now. It's like, after that Memphis trip, I was like, okay, I can do this. And now I'm even considering getting the bike over here to my house and being able to ride it to work, but not in the cold. I'm not going to do it until summertime, <laughs> but yeah, I'm thinking about just riding it to work, but yeah, I love the bike. I love being on it. It's, um, it's a feeling that is unmatched by anything else in the world. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let me ask only, you only, only bikers know why dogs hang their head out the windows. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Oh, I remember one time, having said that, I remember the one time um, I had I was I had a shield. Sometimes I had mm -hmm. the shield on, sometimes I didn't. And this time uh, I had the shield on and I didn't have my goggles on. And I'm telling oh. you, a bug hit me in the eye. Oh. And it was like it was like Muhammad Ali. Uh, yep. Uh, an, un an unobstructed right cross down the pike, right into the, yep. eye. I, I, my eye, I couldn't even open it up for days and it was all swollen. It looked like I'd gotten in a fight and ended up getting black and I don't know what hit me. It wasn't a rock. I think, said, what was a I rock? A <laughs> no, it's a bug. Cause a bug got a somehow got behind that in just a split second yep. got behind that. <coughs> Excuse yep. me. Well, the window whip it around there. Yeah. Yeah, I got hit by some bug on one of on the runs, one of the runs this year, and it left a little bruise on my leg. And probably a big old June June bug, but yeah. But yeah, it's it's I love doing it. I really do love doing it. And we can always tell when I'm getting tired because I dumped the bike. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. All right, yeah, I I'll fuck up. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Um Yes, sir. I get a lot of uh up and coming new generation, next generation, mm -hmm. uh, paranormal investigators that uh, get in trouble. They they jump into this field. Yeah, uh, they're passionate about it, but they have no training. Yeah. They jump in this field. Yeah. They find themselves at the wrong place at the wrong time, saying and doing the wrong thing. They end up with an attachment. They call me. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot a lot of teams out here, but not a lot of training. I love yeah. the fact that you actually interview people, train people. Um, besides mm -hmm. the broken ankle incident, you're you're on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have you. This is going to be a. You should uh, see my application. <laughs> this is going to be a, a multi-dimensional <laughs> question. And, and okay. Just take time. Talk to people about how to have a successful team. The importance of training. And um, what should they do when they when they're on a location so they don't have these issues? Mm -hmm. Well, the the first thing comes when when you decide that you want to have a team, you're going to have to realize that you are the one responsible for these people. And if you're going to be responsible for them, you're going to need to make sure that they are trained to handle whatever it is that's thrown at them. Um, that was made completely clear to me when I was in Mokalumi Hill, California at the Hotel Leisure, where one of the team members had gotten kind of attached on by the uh, doppelganger that's out there. And um, I had to call a bunch of people to come get us out of that because I was not 
prepared for something like that. Wow. So um, I, if, if it's a case of, I, before we even go on site, one of the biggest things that I say is, do you have your spiritual protection with you? It must be on your body or you must be doing your rituals. You must do whatever it is that you find to be your spiritual um, protection. For me, it's crystals. For other people, it might be a cross. It might be a cleansing ritual. It might be whatever it is that they deem. Uh, hell, if they're carrying a teddy bear in their pocket as spiritual protection, I'm fine with that. As long as they have their spiritual protection on them, they're okay. Um, when they And they need to be aware of their situation. Um, if things start getting a little weird, you need to back out and you need to back out quick. Let it settle down and go back in. Um, but you need to be aware of your situation. You need to be aware of what the mood of the location is. And if the, if the, if the spirits don't want you there, you need to try another day. Um, because their energy is quite real. And it can hurt you. And it can follow you home. And luckily, I don't have anybody that follows me home. So I'm fine with that. Um, I think probably my resident would probably have an issue with it I, every now and he, then he pops in, but, um, pretty much my house is ghost free. So I'm okay with that. Um, then let's see, what else can they do when it comes to the bit? You have to also realize that it's a business and you also have to realize that you are the one that's in charge of promoting it. And when I decided that I was going to actually get the team back up and running here in Tennessee, I handed my business card to everybody anybody i met i handed it out with 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 a restaurant tabs i handed out with i handed out everywhere and said you never know my who might need me Absolutely. and they'd look at the card and they'd go you're right i don't i don't but who knows yeah. And, you know, just in just in 2023, my last calculations, and I hope that I don't have another investigation this year, but if it happens, it happens. Um, my business has grown 1,469% over the average wow. for the last 13 years. Wow. So you also have to think about it in a business sense, and you have to realize that you need to have emergency contacts. And that became clear to me with Gina. I didn't know who to call. Um, so you have to have emergency contacts. You have to have ways of contacting the, these people. You have to make sure that they have transportation. You have to make sure that they have insurance. I mean, there's all kinds of different things that you have to do to make it a successful team. There are a bunch of teams that are just casual teams and that's cool. That's awesome. That's fabulous. But if you're looking at it as a business, you need to be aware, you need to act like it is a business. You need to make sure that everybody has training and everybody is on the same page and you don't have any rogues going around doing the things that are going to bring a bad light on your name. Yes, and right. K2 Paranormal Research is my baby. And if you put a black mark on it, I swear to God, <laughs> you will regret it. But um, it's and I take I take lead from a couple of the my friends out in Huntsville where they have no issue filing lawsuits against people that that want to go and and smirch your name so um it's a business for me and it is it is a business that's formed in one of my passions um which is the paranormal and hysteria and paranormal go hand in hand and so my businesses and my passions all go together good for you um mm -hmm. let me ask you this um cemeteries Back mm -hmm. many, many years ago, um, I used to give a tour of a pet cemetery that was haunted. And it, up against the property was the home of the original woman that built the cemetery. And she died in the home. And she was hanging around the home. Um, and then I used to also sometimes, when I had a team other than just me and my wife, I used to sometimes take members out there to train. I kind of regret doing that now for two reasons. I had a lot of people on the tour get attachments. I had a lot of people that I went out to train that ended up having issues. Probably shouldn't have done cemeteries. I hear, it, you know, two sides of the story. You talk to 100 people, 50 will say you are, There's six and one half dozen another whether or not they're going to be haunted. I mean, Murfreesboro is the first cemetery I've been in. Well, no, I got to take that back. think it's okay but to I, train people, Adam? Yeah. You yeah. do? Okay. Yeah. 
as long as you've been through the cemetery already, yeah, it's perfectly fine to do it out there. It's one of those ones where, but the one thing that you also have to, with the cemeteries being outdoors, the thing that you have to be aware of is um, all the interference that you have being outside. You got bug noises, you got wind, you've got water, you've got all these other things that could be on your voice recorders. It's a great thing to train people for, but I think with cemeteries, a lot of the times, um, when I was first beginning out and doing cemeteries, I found nothing in cemeteries and Virginia city was the first, the, the terraces, silver terraces that's out there. That's one of the first cemeteries that I actually started having experiences in. And then Murfreesboro was the next one that I had experiences in. But for me, there's six, one and a half dozen other, whether something's going to happen. Well, let me tell you something, what I am observing, uh, from you, uh, watching you and listening to you your passion for this it just exudes <laughs> um and i know we have we have this in common i've been seeing spirits since i was very young and mm -hmm. i developed over many years a real passion for for this um let's and we you know i live in a haunted house now you've lived in some growing up you've got yeah. a passion you got a passion for everything which now i do at one time I, it was just spirits but now i i've developed you know i'm I'm always watching the sky. I'm always mm -hmm. looking in the woods. If I drive by some woods, I'm yep. looking for Biggie. So t tell everybody how this passion developed and definitely touch base on some of the haunted houses you grew up in. Well, let's see. I never knew I was weird. I never knew that people didn't see what I saw or heard what I saw or experienced what I saw. I thought everybody did. And it didn't really strike me as being anything different until I was a lot older, but I, um, we had moved out from Iowa to Oregon and the house that we moved into was the former mortician's house and, um, it was haunted and it had probably at least one spirit that had walked the earth and the other spirit had never walked the earth as a human. It probably was an elemental of some sort, but it was a nasty little thing. Um, the other one was scared of the the elemental. So it was not, it, you very rarely saw the, the non-intimate, non-elemental without the elemental. Um, he lived in the basement and he just stayed down there. And then um, the second house that I got into, and of course, by this time I'm scared. It's, I don't want to, I don't want to meet these spirits. Um, the second house I lived in that was haunted was one that I had bought and there was something again in the basement and the house just had a weird vibe whenever you went down there. And the third house, I knew who was haunting the house because we knew him in life. Wow. So that one was, that one was so interesting to experience. And I had just gotten into being a ghost hunter and a paranormal researcher. And it was just a thrill to be able to go, okay, that's, that's Tim in the garage building things again. That's Tim going back and forth from the garage to his office. That's Tim coming up the stairs that he would climb to get into the kitchen. And yeah, you knew who it was. Um, and then coming out here to Tennessee before I bought my house, I investigated my house and made sure that it wasn't haunted because I don't want to, I don't care to deal with it anymore when I'm in my private life. Um, in other words, I don't want things watching me when I'm sleeping. Um, but uh, I ends up that my house is like a way station and spirits come through and they leave and they come through and they leave. And yeah, mortician's houses are pretty weird. They, you'd never know who's going to be out there. Um, this house isn't like that, but they're not quite as weird as the mortician's house are. But um, this house, you never know who might be in here. Last Mother's Day, I was in the kitchen doing something and I heard a man, I heard two men out in the living room talking. I couldn't understand what they were saying, but I went out there and it's like, there's no men in my house. <laughs> never. Not, I mean, not never, but, you know, regularly there's no men in my house. And, um then later that night i'm trying to go to sleep and i smell fresh baked baked cookies so i don't know who that was but they decided to go out and bake cookies at 11 o'clock at night and then the next one that showed up um i was on the podcast with jay the cemetery files and i'm like he's like you've got somebody in your house and i'm like yeah i'm feeling that too 
And he said, and he saw exactly the same thing that I saw. It was a tall man dressed kind of like in the sixties, kind of like in a suit, kind of, you know, and, and we just, I just named him Gary. So after a while, Gary hung around for a long time. He was here for about three weeks. And finally I got tired of Gary hanging around and I, I started blaming everything on him. So he left, (laughs) but I haven't had anybody, I haven't had anybody come back lately. So I'm wondering when the next one's going to be maybe about Christmas time, probably, but yeah, but it's just, I started, when I went into middle school, I would bury myself in the library back in the 600s and just devour every single paranormal book I could get my hands on. I read everything from UFOs to ghosts to Bigfoot to everything, and I just read every single book I could get my hands on. And that just carried on into life, and and um, I had more and more experience with it in the reading portion of it before I even begun, begun to get into the field, into the field. And my first investigation was with the Phoenix theater in Petaluma, California with Amy, uh, Amy Bruni from ghost hunters. And she is just a, a wonderful person. And I love her for her kindness because it definitely got me hooked. And that's where I started. And that was in 2010. Okay, this is going to be a weird question. Yes. There's no, there's, there's no wrong answer here. Ooh. Um, what, yeah, but can do I you... do a screwed up answer? <laughs> yeah, okay. Why do you think spirits hang around and don't cross over? And, and do, can we truly help them cross over? And if we can and they do, where do you think they go? And then I'm going to ask you about Bigfoot. Okay, I am going to say right off the bat, I do not believe us as humans have the ability to cross people over. We are not that high on the chain. So I, all the people that claim that they can cross spirits over, I've been in a situation of where there's, oh, there's a spirit in the graveyard and it needs to be crossed over and it's crossed over. And 20 minutes later, I'm walking by the same graveyard. Here's another group. of. There's a spirit here that needs to be crossed over and oh, it's crossed over. It's like either that guy's playing on a train or whatever. I don't know what the hell he's doing, but he's getting crossed over every 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I, I honestly don't think we're high enough on the, on the food chain, spiritual food chain to even be again to cross spirits over. If we were able to cross spirits over, why are we stuck here when we die? Why? We should be able to cross our own selves over. So there's a little big debate with that on me. Um, And are spirits stuck on the planet? I believe that they are, but I don't know why. Um, I think the reasons vary as many, as many reasons as why we stay in the same place when we're living someplace. You know, why do people stay in a house for 30 years? Why do people move around all the time? I, I honestly don't know. All I know is all I can do is try to research who they are and what they had to do with the property and, and why they're try to figure out why they're still there. But if, if we could figure that out, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. This is going to be, I'm going to throw two rumors at you. And these are rumors that have been floating around in our field forever. First rumor is, I mean, I, you hear some of these hauntings that go on for years and years and years. And then like, even I had an incident here where, Mm -hmm. Uh, a nine one. I don't have a landline here, but a nine one one call generated from my home mm-hmm. when my wife was working a concert as a special usher, and I was saying goodbye to some friends going back to England at a pub around the corner. So when I came home, pulled into my driveway, SWAT, yeah, SWAT is on me because they got this call. And when they showed up, I had three mastiffs in the house at the time, and oh. they described it sounded like your mastiffs are tearing somebody apart from limb to limb. And we got to get wow. in. I got there just in time. Cause I thought they were going to go in and I, Did I you research the house. Um, we've tried to, and here what's weird in Vegas is they don't have to tell you if anybody died here or what was, well, no, there. you're not just, just finding out who lived there before. Have you researched it? Nevada's um, actually pretty good with records. A couple of people that we know of but you'll have to can't... pm me your address because i love doing nevada searches because oh, very, very, they're I will. really open i will um, but let me tell you what happened so I, I i let i had to go in the house get the dogs locked into one room let the police come in and search mm-hmm. but here's here's the thing there, there's one rumor that 
uh, somebody said, told me, well, you probably, one of the ghosts that is very protective over you, your wife, and your home probably did that because maybe there was somebody that was going to break in. Then you hear about somebody say, I have a ghost in my house that called the fire department because a fire started in the home and we weren't there and they got the fire department to come and take care of the house. But then there's the flip side of the coin and that some people say the longer a disembodied human spirit tends to hang around and they don't have any, they say they don't have any, they can't tell time. There's no time for them. But they say that the longer these spirits linger in a location, for some reason they develop a malevolence about them and their attitude and the way they behave around regular people. They seem, you know, pissed off for lack of a better pissed term. off. I was just going to say pissed off. Yeah. What um, do you think about those rumors? Well, I know from the last haunted house that I lived in with the gentleman that we knew who he was, the activity in the house ceased when his wife died. His wife passed on and apparently he was waiting for her and there was no more activity after she died. So he was waiting for her. Um, as for spirits being able to do something like that, I would think it's completely possible because it involves electricity. And if you think about what energy is made of and what um, one of the sources for energy is electricity, it's also the one that runs our body. And it's the one that gets drained first when you're on a, a site, heat and that sort of thing, electricity. So I would say, yes, anybody is any spirit that's knowledgeable about phones and landlines would be able to do something like that because the landlines are probably still attached to your house. And all it is, is a signal going through the line to the dispatcher and going from there it probably didn't even speak it probably left an open line and the open line probably brought the SWAT the SWAT heard what they heard and that's when they you know began their yeah, I'm glad if I did, if I had gotten home 10 minutes later I probably would have had my dogs dead because yeah. they wouldn't the cops would have went in there and they would have had to mm -hmm. shoot them so yeah. um, somebody was watching especially out for the dogs, dogs that big yeah. yeah yeah but um I think the spirits are able to do that um and I think some of them do grow attached to us and some of them do like us and, and want us protected. Um, so they would be able to do that. And I've heard so many stories about that where people are woken up because there's smoke and, and they didn't know it. They would have died if, if the spirit hadn't woken. There's so many stories like that. And, and to me, those are really, really good stories. Those are happy stories. Well, definitely before, uh, before I have to say goodbye to you, there's some things I want to accomplish. I want uh -oh. to tell everybody about your, well, before we get to this part, before we get to your website, your podcast, uh -huh. and where people can watch the podcast, all of that stuff, I want real quick, your areas, I'm, I, you know, when I started my radio show 10 years ago, I didn't really care about Bigfoot. Yeah. But in starting to have Bigfoot guys on my radio show, mm -hmm. I, I caught the bug. And eventually I realized I think I might have had an experience and talked to some experts who said, mm -hmm. yeah, we think you did. So what do you think about Bigfoot? And firm believer. Absolute firm believer, hands down. Yes, because I have been, I was raised in the Pacific Northwest. I have seen him. I've smelled him. I've, I've been terrorized by him when we were camping out in the woods. And yeah, absolutely, hands down, there is something out there. And eventually, we will get evidence of it. Firm not, evidence, not, as in a not, body. Not traveling interdimensionally or being. I don't know. See, alien. there. I I have actually heard some really good um, data on the possibility that they are spiritual beings, um, or I I don't able to move from one area to another. I've heard some really good, really good data on it. So I'm still on the fence about that one. As for his 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 existence, absolutely, hands down. Yeah, you think there's something out there. Uh, we're we'll have a body at some point. At some point oh, we'll you believe body. so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, that's going to be yeah. crazy. I mean, we all laugh about it. Oh, Bigfoot, Harry and the Hendersons, yada, yada. But when they do finally 
And there's people out I there think that he's know more intelligent than we think. I think he's much more intelligent than we think. I think that um, another piece of evidence that got me first starting to really believe in him is there is a form of ape on every single continent of the United of the world except for North America. North America does not have an ape, and he would fulfill that that little mm -hmm. piece of of uh, factoid information. So, yep, hands okay. down, firm believer. Here Here's the lineup. I want you to tell people about the website. I want you to mm -hmm. tell people about your team. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to tell people about your podcast and how okay. and where they can watch it. Uh, website is k2pn.com. Um, not very much going on up there because you are mostly we're on Facebook um, and Instagram, Facebook mostly. Um, and then the team is now 15 members. Uh, we wow. have members pretty much all over the state of, of Tennessee. Um, I think I'm stopped at inviting people on board until other people have left and just concentrating on getting those folks trained. Um, I have people that range from store clerks to people with criminal, um, criminal degree backgrounds. So um, I've got a very, very nice team that's put together that we can pretty much handle anything you throw at us. We do businesses, we do private property, we do land, we do anything, anything that's haunted, we'll do it. Um, I'm not so much into dolls. I don't like dolls at all. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go anywhere that the funds will allow us to go. Uh, I was doing investigations up in Illinois and Indiana this year, and just, it was just a thrill to be able to, to work with the folks that are up there. So, and then what else was the last one? I think I got it. You all. have, I think you have, you have, you have a book coming out and you have, a I have a book podcasts. coming out. Yeah. I've got a book coming out. It's supposed to be out by the, end of first quarter next year, we've just run into a hiccup where my publisher has backed out and um, we're dealing with that. Um, the next thing, uh, so we might have to go, we're, we're going to probably be moving to another publisher, but um, yeah, that what was I'll do when I, when I send you my, after the show, when I send you my address, mm -hmm. I'll also send you the name of my publisher. You oh, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. You may love her and uh, Annette great. of Stellium, and she's just a great person. That'd be and wonderful. You guys work something really nice out. That would be great. That'd be awesome. That's a great little lead. Um, seeing Sally, it's, this is just days old for me. So I'm still whirling in, in shock because we had a contract. Um, and then, um, with regards to the podcast, I have two presently. The first one is the cemetery files. And the second one is paranormal triangle where we've teamed up with where Jay Hill and I, and, uh, David Taylor have joined up and we talk about things in the paranormal. We talk about issues like, uh, for, for instance, the last, the last episode was on how Hollywood has blown the paranormal out of the water with misfault with the misleading information and falsehoods. So we talk about things that are, it's, it's actually the conversation that I would love to have all the time. Because I love talking about the paranormal and I love talking about the mechanics of it and the the history and everything. It just, to me, it might be a little bit more exciting than going out and investigating, but um, it's just a tickle pink. For the cemetery files, we are currently working on, we're currently in hiatus. Uh, we will probably be returning in February. Um, but we have just, Jay and I have just, uh, joined forces with a nonprofit that's getting put together to work on a very, very huge project. So the focus of the cemetery files may be changing very soon before we even go into season two, but that's still all up in the air We're we're still putting together the mechanics of that. So it's a very exciting project. We're going to be able to help people a lot more than we are right now. So. Well, I am excited because I'm going to send you my address and uh, you can also, uh, what is that thing where you can type in an address and you can see, actually see a satellite I can, picture? Yeah, I can do a, yeah, do a Google Earth on it. I would yeah. be interested to see what yeah, you, send me, you send see me the in. house. I'm the, I'm the haunted house in the neighborhood. We've been here over 20 years. And uh, it got to the point where kids wouldn't even come trick-or-treating here. Um, the, the parents would come up and knock on the door, and the kids are on the sidewalk. I give the candy to the parents. And so I love many, it. 
weird things have happened here over the years that we're just so when you see the picture of the house, I'd be interested to see what your impression is. Um, yeah, my, what you get my from that. Yeah, I can. That's one of my. I Jay keeps pushing me into mediumship, and I just have been using it for ghost hunting in my own private uses. But he's pushing me a little bit outside of my comfort zone. So one of my one of my abilities is to see homes as they used to be, and to see um, to see places and and times and all that kind of stuff. So and I'm also I have, excited yeah. about you about sending you the name of my publisher. I think you're gonna That'd love be it. Great. That'd be great. Really, really and really and Nevada is so, Nevada is so open on records. I can go in and actually look at deeds and transfers and they recorded leaseholds. I was so tickled. You could see who lived who lived in the house for a certain period of time. I did a big huge uh, project for Eureka, Nevada that they had a, a ghost that would appear in many different locations and they couldn't they couldn't re Usually you find a ghost in one location, but this guy was going all over the place and they couldn't figure out why he was in these many different places. And come to find out at one point through my research, he owned all of those buildings and he still to this day believes that he owns those buildings. Hmm. So Very that was a fun research project. Yeah. Well, before I kick you out of here, will you come back? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. like I said, I've got one, two. I've only got, I don't know how much what we talked about, but I'm still looking at half a dozen. Yeah, things. whenever. I'm, I've am i got, I think I've got one in January, but yeah, I'm pretty much free. So I'm, I'm in my, out, I'm in my uh, hiatus. All right. No. I'll throw you some dates. I'm booked out okay. usually cool. two to three months in advance. I'll throw cool. some dates at you in the spring. Cool. And, um, I love you and respect you, sister. I think you're just Thank cool. You. Thank and, you. And uh, I wish you all the Ditto. very best. I can't wait to talk to you again. I'll send you my address. I'll send you um, my publisher. Send me the publisher and all that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll send I'll her take a quick a look note to look for you. Yeah. I'll take and, a look uh, at you your house and see what I can talk. come up with. You have a wonderful, wonderful, Thank wonderful you. remainder to your um, Friday evening. A Merry I Christmas. Will. Merry and Christmas. A happy, happy New, New Year. year. And, uh, happy Yule. Happy Yule. <laughs> yeah. And I will talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Kelly Schaefer, K2 Paranormal Research in Tennessee, Bell Witch Country. I I seem to think that famous feud was the Hatfields and the Schaefers, and then eventually the Schaefers got tired of the nonsense, and then the McCoys came in there. I, I don't I don't quote me on that, but I could have swore it was the Hatfields and Schaefers. All right, guys. Um uh, I, I'm going to start by saying, brothers and sisters, please forgive me. I never do this. But, you know, sometimes life happens and you got to do what you got to do. Uh, I'm having a hard time getting to my my ordination into the priesthood, which is going to be a big event in Columbia, Illinois, in March. St. Patrick's Day weekend of all weekends. And I, it's just so it's blowing me away that it's falling on that weekend because I was baptized and confirmed under St. Patrick as my guardian angel and saint when I was a little kid. So it's funny how it just, you know, there's things beyond uh, us that are working things all the time, but I'm scheduled to go to Columbia, Illinois in March, St. Patrick's day weekend for my uh, ordination uh, to become a priest. And I'm having a hard time getting there. So if you want to help a seminarian become a priest and you want to donate to the cause, you can do that at my website. And um, please, if you do, make mention along with your with your donation what it's for, because I have a lot of very special gifts that I want to send to people that are able to help me uh, get to my ordination. So that's my I'll get down off my soapbox. That was um uh, that was what I wanted to say about that. And if you're interested in the church that I belong to, it's the United States Old Catholic Church. You can go to the website, usocc.org. You can also go to bishopjameslong.com. What you'll find at those two websites is the link to night prayer, which is every weeknight at 7 p.m. Pacific. You'll also find the link to Bible study, which is every Wednesday and Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. Pacific. And we have a 
wonderful Facebook page called United States Old Catholic Church Clergy and Parishioners. If you're looking for a church community um, that there's no judgment, we accept everybody and everybody's very loving uh, and accepting there. Um, look at that page and join it if you'd like. Um, so that's it. Um, thank you to Zach and Adrian Clayton for uh, producing my show. They're my co-producers. I couldn't do without them. I'm taking Christmas off. Guys, I'm not going to be back with another live show to the last Friday of the year. Um, Friday, December 29th. And you all love her. And that's why I'm bringing her back. The actress Camille James Harmon is coming back to talk to us. A matter of fact, you can catch her tonight at 10 p.m. on the new show Unbelievable with um, Dan Aykroyd. She was on last week in a role. And tonight she's on in another role on that show. You can catch Camille there. So I'm excited to have her back. But yeah, I'm taking Christmas off. So let me take this opportunity to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Um, and, a, and I'll wish you all a Happy New Year when I see you on the 29th. But please just have a very Merry Christmas. And um, check out Zach's website, communitypayitforward.us. Communitypayitforward.us. Go there. Be pleasantly surprised and uh, just check it out. Um, Eli Roth presents the Legion of Exorcists, streaming everywhere. If you want to, if you haven't seen the series and you want to check it out, uh, it's streaming everywhere. <laughs> um, no, there's no two season two announcement yet. Uh, it's still in pending. We haven't heard one way or another. If you liked, did see the series and you liked it, you can go to the Travel Channel website, and there's a place where you can make your voice be heard, and you can send messages that you are requesting, hoping that there's a season two to the series. You can find me on Facebook now at Lawrence Marice. That's a stage name. My original profile got hacked and got deactivated. It just disappeared. So I'm on Facebook now under Lawrence Marice, Sean Patrick Whittington. So that's him. Thank you to Things Network. Thank you to Spirit Alabama. Thank you to Temple of Phoenix Rising Entertainment. Thank you to Skeleton Key Network. Thank you to PACT. Little P, capital A-C-T, podcasting for all coming to, together channel. For all these networks, simulcasting my show. God bless you all for doing that. And now it is bad joke time. I'm going to pull a bad joke that one of you sent in out of this haunted carnival barker hat. And if you want to know the story behind the haunted carnival barker hat, that story is in my second book. Very interesting story. The gentleman that uh, wore this hat, whose daughter donated it to me after he passed away. Why can't you hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? Because the P is silent. Good night, Danny. Good night, Jack. Good night, dog. Good night, Harold. Rest in peace. Good night, Ernie. You just scared away our guest on that one. <laughs> Good night, Ernie. Good night, Bill. Good night, Dan. I love you all. God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace. <laughs>